End Profit, It Cannot Be Reformed by Eric Schechter The world is falling apart all around us. Our jobs are outsourced to more exploited countries, to people in prisons, and, increasingly, to robots. The government business lies about everything. Our faraway cousins are bombed to hell for profit. The ecosystem, poisoned by toxic spills and roasted by carbon emissions, may soon die, taking us all with it. All these problems, and others, arise from our psychology of separateness and its flip side, our economy of not sharing. Some people blame corporate capitalism, as though there were some other kind, as though we've merely strayed from honest commerce into corruption which could be cleaned up by reforms. But it can't be. Commerce is toxic, not just in its current manifestation, but in its fundamental principles, contrary to what we've always been told. It's like the board game Monopoly, which always ends with all the players but one totally impoverished, even if no one cheats. So that's in the game's principles themselves, not in some corruption. The problem is so deeply ingrained in our culture that we can hardly see it, even when it's pointed out to us. Money is influence. It finds a way through or around regulations more surely than water finds a way downhill. The rich buy legislators to further enrich themselves. Our democracy, if we ever had one, has been replaced by plutocracy, ruled by the rich as Guylands and Page showed quantitatively in their 2014 research. And we certainly don't get to vote on how our workplaces are run. The only way to avoid rule by the wealthy class is to not have a wealthy class. But that change would require sharing, for this simple reason. If we don't share, then we must trade, which always favors the trader in the stronger bargaining position, thus making him stronger still increasing inequality, concentrating wealth and power, creating plutocracy. We need to decentralize power. It can't be entrusted to a few corporate heads and politicians, because power corrupts, as the Stanford Prison Experiment demonstrated. But corruption is not just in the powerful. Separate property alienates all of us from one another. You keep your stuff in your house, I keep my stuff in my house, I don't need to care about you, and I can't afford to care about you. Your loss is not my loss, and might even be my gain. Competition kills empathy and brings out the worst in us. It's no wonder that racism, sexism, bullying, and murder are commonplace. We can only be made safe by a culture that encourages our better side, a culture of caring and sharing where no one is left behind, and no one wants to hurt others. Every market transaction also has externalities, that is, costs outside the concerns of buyer and seller, borne by some third party who is not consulted in the negotiation. These unmeasured costs don't affect market prices, and so the market has none of the wisdom and efficiency for which it is praised. Externalities are enormous. For instance, greenhouse gas emissions will kill us all if continued much longer. So our choices are to share or die. But I'm not talking about sharing a toothbrush or about six guys sharing a house. I'm talking about deprivatizing Exxon and Goldman Sachs. Let's buy schools for the many, not yachts for the few. The first step is to get more people talking about it. We must spread our understanding. Imagine all the people sharing all the world, John Lennon sang. Can we change our culture fast enough to save the ecosystem? Start singing.